Board of Control. Our first contest in the ring this evening is a light welterweight contest scheduled for six three-minute rounds between and introducing firstly in the red corner wearing the blue and white striped trunks coming from Hartlepool and weighing in at 10 stone one and a quarter pounds. He holds a 25 fight professional record, 12 wins, three wins by way of knockout with 13 losses. Would you please welcome to Sheffield, Alan Temple. And across the ring, ladies and gentlemen, his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks, coming from Bradford, uh, weighing in at 10 stone, one and a half pound. Uh, his professional record is 22 contests, 19 wins, 8 wins by way of knockout with one loss and two draws. He's a former world title challenger. Please welcome from Bradford, Junior, the hitter, Witter. Your officials for this contest, the timekeeper, Mr. Gary Grennan of Burnley, the referee, Mr. Roy Snipe from Mexbra, and this is six three-minute rounds. Obey my commands at all times. When I shout break, stop boxing, stand back. And if a boxer goes down, make sure they retire to a new tutorial. Shake hands, let's have a good contest. The seriously sidelined Junior Witter, who performed very creditably against one of the world's elite Zab Judah just over a year ago at Hampden Park on the night Mike Tyson was fighting Lou Savarese. Wants a big fight, instead has to mark time again, but this time against a rather more talented opponent in the former two-time ABA champion Alan Temple from Hartlepool, who has good skill and a fair bit of self-belief. His problem here is a lightweight in with a light welterweight, really, isn't he? Yes, he is, and that's a, a pretty big problem with Witter, who is a, a decent puncher at like well away. So, Temple pretty cagey and will be trying to outbox Witter for what's going to be the effect when Witter starts to get punches to Temple. There was one of them, a left hand, thrown fast, and there already looks to be a bit of blotch around the cheekbone of Temple where that landed. Witter from Bradford, already 27 years of age. And he might think that the last year since he fought Zab Judah has been a bit wasted, although he's had four wins against uh, lower quality opposition. Good right hand seemed to just lift Temple momentarily off his feet. He's feeling the weight of these, Glenn, you know. Yes, he is, and uh, he looks pretty strong with her taking the centre of the ring, very confident. And it looks as if you know he's just ready to try and nail Temple with some big punches. Witter, who seriously wants a big fight, in particular with Ricky Hatton, who's with us at ringside tonight. Bound to be able to buy play there later, I would think. First of all, Witter's got to win. Temple might have other ideas. He fought one of our other leading light welterweights, uh, John Thaxton, recently. It was only a four-rounder. That was a bit ludicrous. Should have been longer. And Temple, having been floored, was coming back strongly at the end. So interesting to see how this develops. It's only six rounds, mind you. Well, he is a good boxer, Temple, but he does... You know, he's got to work very hard to keep it together and try and outwork Witter. Looking for big, big shots. Junior Witter is a frustrated character. There's a danger of Witter becoming bitter, isn't there? Yes, there is. I think, you know, he wants the good fights, he wants to get these guys in the ring. That's not happening, and uh, you know, it's now that really he's starting to deserve a, a decent shot. Switch hitting all the time. Loves to punch from unconventional angles. It's not a style that's everybody's cup of tea, which could be one of his problems, of course. But there's no doubting he's been pretty effective so far. One of his tricks sometimes is to look outside the ring one way and throw punches from the other. Well, you would think the extra weight, the extra power will tell here. Temple finding it hard to get into it. He's missing with quite a few witter, but he's landed with a few more. His round. Yeah, 
Welcome back to Ponds Forge in Sheffield. First fight of the night in the ring with Johnny Nelson topping the bill, defending his WBO cruiserweight title. Tough defence for him tonight. First up, it's Junior Witter here. What do you think of that first round? I think he was loading up a bit, wasn't he, there? He was loading up a bit. I think that's a sign of his confidence. I don't think he thinks Temple is that much of a challenge. He wants bigger things. And I think what he wants to do is really you know, blast out a message. And that's what he's trying to do. Dominic Ingle doing the talking in the corner with John, sons of Brendan. Second round coming up. Junior Witter in the green trunks. 19 wins, just that one defeat against Zab Judah. He came in at late notice that night too. It's good accuracy. I think the corner have told him to just pick his punches a wee bit better and box his way to open uh, Temple up a bit. Yes, he's got good reflexes and skills with it, and I think they wanted him to use that. <laughs> Temple's professional career has never really quite taken off after his heroics in the amateurs with those two OBA titles. In fact, he's got more defeats on his record than wins, which is... Um, it's a bit of a scandal, that really, isn't it? Bearing in mind that he's a pretty reasonable talent. Yes, he is talented, as you see, and the career never really took off in the professionals. Just tended to be used a bit too much as an opponent against higher-class opposition. Stopped by the likes of Eamon McGee, Michael Ayres, Bobby Vanzi. And Witter will fancy himself to do something similar here. Can't quite time the shots at the moment, though. As Temple looks somehow to get a foothold in the fight. It's a good right hand from Witter, who has good hand speed, as even Zab Judah found out once or twice in the early rounds. He's an awkward customer to fight. Judah found it out too, didn't he? He got rather negative in the end that night, Witter. There was no serious chance of him winning the fight, but he got through without too many alarms, didn't he, against a guy everybody was raving about worldwide. Yes, he did, against a very, very good fighter. But not so much of the run and hide in this fight. He's very much the aggressor here. And KG as he is, is going to find it, sorry, Temple as KG as he is, is going to find it difficult to keep out of the way of these punches. Having to make the fight, Witter, I fancy counter-punching him would probably suit him more. <laughs> Just no telling, really how good this fella might turn out to be when he's pitched in a bit deeper. Certainly with the leading domestic fighters. Can't think of a reason in the world why he wouldn't be fighting for the British or Commonwealth titles. Can you? No, not at all. He certainly should be, should be there soon. Well, he should be there now, actually. Have international football for you, Sky Sports Extra. The quarterfinals of the Copa America, it's down to sudden death now. Sunday night from 8, Chile, Mexico, Costa Rica against Uruguay. And Monday night from 11, Colombia against Peru and Brazil in action against Honduras. Quarterfinals of the Copa America, Sunday and Monday night, live only on Sky Sports Extra. Back to Glenn and Ian here. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Third round of this one, Bradford's junior Witter in the green trunks, the reasonably well-kept secret of the light welterweight division in this country at the moment. Alan Temple of Hartlepool now 28. His 26th fight tonight, 12 wins, 13 defeats. Had a good win last time over Gary Hibbert, but this is a, quite another matter. He's trying to get his, his southpaw jab working Temple and give Witter a little bit of movement. Again, Temple clever enough to prevent himself being caught cleanly by 
Witter, who does have surprising power. <laughs> Loading up again, rather there, Junior Witter. I think motivation is a bit of a problem for him at this stage of his career. And good body punches, three or four of them. And one or two of those, I'm afraid, went round the back into the illegal zone. Yes, and just getting a little caution on the referee for Hawking oh, while he's doing he that. Lifted with a right hand there, and Temple is floored. Have to take a mandatory eight count. Doesn't look seriously hurt, but it was a sharp punch, and it came quickly on him. Third round. Witter will be looking for the finishing punches. That's not a knockdown. He just wrestled him down there. No question about that. Just showing, showing the difference in strength there, really just threw Temple to the floor. Oh, and another right hand. Very difficult, this for Alan Temple. Moving up a weight effectively, even though on the scales last night they were weighing about the same. Witter is the natural light welterweight of these two. Couldn't quite land cleanly, Witter. Always has this kind of languid, cocky air about him, Witter, in the ring. Yes, he's really showing contempt for Temple in there, just walking forward, hands down a lot, just letting the shots go, loading up, looking for the big ones. looks all the time, which is if he thinks it's only a matter of time, but is it? Well, he had Alan Temple on the floor in that round with that good right hand. But he's missing quite a bit, isn't he, too? Yes, he is. I mean, he's, he's really trying to make a big impression here. He wants something spectacular, loading up a bit too much, but he's still really just throwing Temple around the ring. That was a someone with the inside of the glove, but still enough power to have Temple over and almost through the ropes. Yeah, it was a bit of a cuff, wasn't it, looking at it again. And you see Alan Temple there is shaking his head at the referee. I don't know if he thought so too. Yeah, someone with the inside of the glove, but still enough power to have Temple over. <laughs> Tough night. Alan Temple. Here's the fourth round of this one. Junior Witter in the green trunks, remember. Just could be at this stage of his career where he's all the time trying to make an impact and hunt out a big fight, that he's almost trying too hard. Yes, I think he is a little bit in this fight, trying a bit too hard. I think if he relaxed, he'd find Temple easier to hit. And he desperately wants everybody watching on television and the people in the trade to go away saying, yeah, that junior Witter is something special. He really should be fighting Ricky Hatton. He should be fighting for the British and Commonwealth titles. But it isn't quite as easy as that. And one of the problems with Ricky Hatton is they're both in the same camp and it might not suit Frank Warren to have the two of them meet. In fact, that almost certainly is the case. Oh, Witter will feel a bit aggrieved with that. Temple down again. It didn't seem to be any kind of punch there. It just looked like he was pushed down. He was caught with the right hand as he went down, but it did seem to be a bit of a push. Certainly Temple not badly hurt there. Might be interesting to look at that again. It was counted as a knockdown anyway. That's a great right hand there from Witter. And a body punch too. Good punches. And a nice straight right too. Can he find a bit more snap and accuracy about the work? Looks as if he really means business here. This is all getting very hard for Temple. He's very game. He's trying to get the punches off, but he's starting to take a few too many. Two good body shots. Came back with one of his own there, Temple. That was his probably best moment of the fight. Witter stands off again, having had Temple on the run a bit earlier in the round. 
just tends to fight in bursts like this, and he rethinks his strategy. Leads with the right hand for a bit. He's definitely one out of the Nassim, Hamid, Johnny Nelson type draw, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's been very aggressive here, though. Sometimes quite negative. Ricky Hatton, would-be opponent of Junior Witter if he has his way, watching and no doubt analysing with that boxing brain of his about how he might go on against Witter if they met. He just called off the assault for a moment, Witter. Just a bit wild and over-anxious. Witter again, missing a lot. Yes, there was one decent right hand going in from Witter. Well, he's winning the fight easily enough. Welcome back. Controversial incident in the last round here. Now, this was counted as a knockdown. See if you can see a punch that might have caused it. Not really, it looked like the left hand. He missed with a punch and pulled him down. That was the impression at the time, and it's rather confirmed by the replay. You can see how the referee might have been fooled into thinking there was the punch. Here's the fifth round. Doesn't matter too much, I don't think, on the scorecard, because Witter's winning everything at the moment. For Temple, I'm afraid it's proving just a survival job against an opponent who's just a bit too strong and zippy and snappy and hitting a bit too hard at this weight. And that's the bit in italics, the last three words, at this weight. It is a big factor, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a, a huge factor. You know, the extra punch power, the extra physical strength that Witter has. But Campbell is trying hard. Obviously, he's got a lot of pride. He wants to get through this. <laughs> Tries to nail him against the ropes with a right-hand body shot. Witter again. all the time so it's very hard for the um, opponent to know quite where the next punch is going to come from it could be quite a bamboozling style to come up against He's trying to find another unexpected angle this is when Witter needs to let the punches go, use the jab, just loosen up a bit all through this fight. He's been a bit tense and you're trying a bit too hard. It's a bit of a hiding to nothing job for him, isn't it, this? Yes, it is. Nothing. You know, there's a bit of pressure on him. You know, he's trying to really blast Temple out of there. That's not quite coming. Just needs to do what he can do best and let the, the boxing start to, to work. He's in the situation where he has to win just to stay where he is in the pecking order of things. Oh, big left hand, and that really stiffened Temple, who does well to stay up, and in the end, the follow-up punch puts him down, but it was really that first one that had all the effect. Counts at eight, now is he going to get up? Nine, no, he's going to be knocked out here, counted out in the fifth round. Junior Witter scores the knockout as we rather thought he would have just hit too hard, much too hard, for Alan Temple. And in the end, although there were frustrating moments along the way when he looked over-anxious and loaded up too much, the finish was pretty impressive. It was very impressive. That was a, a terrific punch from Witter. That The one punch put everything out of Temple. There was a follow-up, but it was that one punch that really did rock Temple right to his boots. But I still think the mystery remains. How good is Junior Witter? Well, we don't know that until he's in with the right opponent, but you know, that, that was impressive. It was very good shots from Witter. Took everything out of Temple. Just brings it right round. Big roundhouse left. Left to right from almost from his boots. But look at the effect it had on Temple. Who couldn't get up from all of that.
and watching this again. I would say memo to the people who are handling Junior Witter and maybe to a lesser extent the British Boxing Board of Control, it is high time this fellow was given a British or Commonwealth Championship fight, and I mean now, not somewhere down the line. He deserves that chance now. Most definitely. He's, you know, he's, he's paid his juice, he's had the fight, he's waited long enough. I think you know, he does need a shot. And that, of course, is if uh, showdown with his, uh, well, stablemate in, in a way, since they're both under the Frank Warren barrel, Ricky Hatton, we're presuming that won't happen. We'd like to see it, but I've got a horrible feeling we won't, not for the time being, anyway. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and 25 seconds of round five, Alan Temple fails to beat the referee's count of 10. The winner, by count out, Junior, the hitter, Witter. All which I can do is keep winning. And Similar career point perhaps to a moment in Johnny Nelson's career earlier when the fights he wanted kept eluding him. But Nelson, his stable mate, came through that phase. And Nelson's a top line fighter these days, featuring in our top of the bill tonight for the WBO World Cruiserweight title against the former world champion from Argentina, Marcelo Dominguez. And Johnny, no doubt, will be boosted by news of Witcher's sharp success in that ring. That one coming up shortly. Brendan Ingle probably having to calm him down at this stage rather than the other way. And the younger Ingle boys, part of the camp with Junior. And Adam Smith's going to muscle in there and try to put some picture together for the light welterweight future. Five stoppage defeats in a row since your brave effort against Zab Judah. And a fifth round there. Well done. Five stoppage wins. Yeah. I did, I did enough. I mean... I didn't, couldn't really get motivated, motivated for it, but I got in, threw a punch, landed, that's it. Too big, too strong for Alan Temple tonight. Way too big, way too strong. And the best light welterweight in the world. Well, you've been calling out Ricky Hatton and Eamon McGee. Ricky has been watching at ringside. Do you deserve a shot at him now? Most definitely. Do you think you can beat me? I didn't hear you. Can you speak, speak up? Am I going to give you a shot? I said, do you think you can beat me? I, I can know I can beat you. I know I can beat you. I've got four belts there, but a few more performances like that, and you're bringing a bit more to the table. To be honest, you, to be honest, you sell no tickets. You've been a little bit boring in, in the past, but in fair, fairness to you, your last few fights, you've been looking a bit more like, and that's what we need to get the fight on. What's promoter Frank Warren saying? He, he looks after both of you. He's saying, Ricky's my boy, I'm looking after him, I'm getting some bums to beat. He's keeping that WBU world title, because they're in a mandatory contender, so I can fight anybody in the top 100, so what? Ricky, you're meant to be back on September the 15th, you've no opponent yet. Why not say to Frank, let's get Junior Witter in the ring? It'll be interesting. Well, I've been saying to, to Frank to, um, you know, to get the fight on, but it's got um, to be appealing to the public and with the performances. Oh, see it. Oh, How many of you want to see me versus Ricky? All of them. That's the night I'm going to destroy you. Yeah. Um, um, how do you come to that conclusion? You're going to destroy me. Certainly not on that tonight, mate. Hey, I have what it takes. You think you're good. You are good. But you're not good enough. Great fight. Great clash of sky styles. I want it. He wants it. The people, it the people need to get it on. Get it on. So the message to Frank Warren is get it on. Well, yeah, get it on. Of course. Oh, superb, kid. I will destroy you. Thank you very much, guys. We hope to see it. Clash of styles in and out of the ring, I think you could say. We'd love it to happen, Nicky. Would you fancy it as a fight? Oh, I think it'd be a very, very good fight. And, um, yeah, well, where, whether the politics will allow it, I don't know. But it would certainly be a good fight. Um, it wasn't a brilliant performance but tonight by Witter, but a very good finishing and uh, <laughs> clowning about. I'm glad to see they're, they're both taking it... Uh, you know, in, in, a in the right design. spirit. Exactly, in the right spirit. That's but it is a business. Yeah. Is, is it a proposition? It's, it, it's a serious proposition. I think the fans would like to see it. There are so many good light welterweight fights out there in Britain. We've got a really talented division. And any two of us, say, five or six against each other would be very, very exciting. And this is just one of them. Now, what has Witter done tonight to make it happen?